every single click is where I show 99.9% .9 of all the clicks in a Hearts of Iron 4 game. So it is more of a long form video. Instead of several minutes, it will be several hours. That's right. And we're going to play Norway with a new focus tree. And it is a really good focus tree. I think I have all of Scandinavia. I think it is the best new focus tree. So every single click is where I focus on showing the gameplay and showing the clicks and explain to you the game mechanics so you become a better Hearts of Iron 4 player. And it has been hotly requested for so long. Please show more navy. Now, the biggest issue with playing a minor power in Hoi 4 and making a navy is what you just can't. The only way you can really do it is by gobbling up your neighbors nearby, taking their navies in peace conferences, and then building from the ground up there. That's the only really way you can do it. You just never gain the enough industrial capacity of civilian factories or naval dockyards to actually construct enough factories. However, Norway is an exception because they have this ability. Let me scroll all the way to the right. Oh God, it keeps going. It keeps going. Convert the merchant ship. So at the start of the game, you get an obnoxious amount of convoys as Norway. It's meant to reflect the merchant fleet, which is very, very large. And that is reflected in convoys. But what you can do is convert a set number of convoys actually into very basic destroyers for free. Yeah, there's no cost. It doesn't cost political power. It doesn't cost any civilian production. It just converts convoys directly into destroyers. Now, they're not very good destroyers, but they work. And this will allow us to make a gigantic destroyer fleet that requires no manpower for Norway. Hey, listen, I'm not complaining. It's really good. So let's show how you do it. First of all, this focus cannot be selected if you have gone for the, the broken gun policies. So at the very start of the game, Norway is at a crossroads. It either wants to focus primarily on the people, civilian industry and the economy, or it wants to focus on its armed forces. Right now, we don't have any immediate threats. So why focus on the army? Well, anyway, if you do go for good broken gun policies, you're basically saying, halt, no more military production of any kind. So what you're gonna have to do is complete this one first. Where is it? Not this one. And then this one, and then do broken gun policies. You have to do the broken gun policies if we're going down the historical path. I haven't explained myself very well, but we're doing the historical path as Norway. If you wanna know what historical is, you click the historical one. There you go. These are the historical focuses for Norway. Now, why are we doing historical? Because I kind of just want to make it an interesting game. Now, if I wanted to, in 1939, I could find a way of breaking the game mechanics to declare war off Scandinavia and forming Scandinavia or whatever and becoming a major power. But I just don't find that very fun. I kind of like playing historical, sticking to the rules, and seeing what I can make of being as a small nation, which is Norway. Are we done yet? Okay. Every Hoy game, you start with the notifications at the top of the screen. Research slot. We need to focus on industry. This is important because it unlocks concentrate and disperse industry, which opens more building slots. You will run out of building slots as Norway. Trust me. Next all construction. We're going to be building a lot of stuff. We need the construction. And finally, we are going to take care of research. There is a however moment where we will be refitting some of our destroyers to be a little bit more combat effective. We might come back to improving the batteries, but we'll worry about that another day. Let's go down this path because we need radar on the left side and we need fire control on the right hand side. And we'll talk about more of that as we progress. Remember, this is going to be Navy oriented video, but I'm going to have to make some ground forces at the same time to kind of build a decent economy. All right, first thing we're going to do is build infrastructure here. No, I don't think I am. I think I'm going to make David dot yards from the very start of the game. So the very start of the game, you're on civilian economy and you suffer a penalty for construction of mills and civvies. However, you don't suffer from any penalty for anything else. So if you want to make infrastructure or naval dot yards, you can go for it. And I feel like there's not much of a penalty to that. The only downside is that we all of our industry is eaten up by this, the hard 30s. Can you see that? So the very start of the game, Norway suffers from everything bad. A bad army, a bad government, a bad economy, the bad ideology knocking on our back door. And also the fact that our forts are completely useless. Forts aren't that really great anyway, but this makes them even more useless. So, wow, they suck. Naval dot yards. Okay, we are going to make naval dot yards. And I realized too, I kind of want to make destroyers on the back of this as well. Change of plan. I think we're going to go with my destroyer idea. So we're going to go for the merchant and escort builder, which gives production for convoys and screens, which are light crews and destroyers. And I'm going to focus on making convoys quicker and also the production for screens as well. Yeah, and this Plus, also gives a research bonus if you go for it, which is also nice. I think I've changed my mind again. Are we going to do construction? Because since construction actually isn't that useful early game, there's no way because you have no industry. All your consumer goods are being eaten by the hard 30s, which is kind of like the Great Depression just for Norway. Norway has its own version of depression. Madness, right? 
I think we're going to go for depth charges. So what are we going to do is two things. We're going to be producing our own little version of this destroyer. We'll make this one to begin with. See, this mile is awesome because it gives plus seven production. Anything that improves production for ships is just amazing. And we're also going to focus on artillery. And we're going to go for that. Okay, so just explain what I've just done there. Because you're producing this destroyer. We will improve it later on, though. It's good because it's a decent design. And we can modify and change it as we go. Like, for instance, it's got, it's got torpedoes on it. And it can come in handy later on. And we'll, we'll take advantage of that as well. Plus, we're going to focus a little bit on artillery and a little bit on guns. There's so many things you have to click and be aware of for Norway, though. And also, I'm going to click on this button to gain free trains as well. Just get the free trains button over actually producing trains because your industry is a little bit constrained, so it's a little bit more difficult. I've explained a lot of things there. I don't know what parts of your knowledge are missing, but I did lots of clicks. Anyway, shift left click on your unassigned divisions. We're going to move them all to Oslo. No, we're not. We're just going to select all of them apart from one horse, and then we're going to do the one division trick. Once again, minor powers benefit more from the one division trick. So my advice is take advantage of that. What we're going to do is assign this guy. Oh, reckless. He's skill one. So it's tempted to go for this guy. But the problem with this guy is he is already a chief of the army. Meaning I can't use him to farm for this trait, which is the infantry leader. So I want to select a guy who hasn't already got like this square piece of paper here. So it's either this guy or this guy. And the reason why I'd select a guy that has lower skill is because I can level him up more aggressively and kind of fine tune him to how I want him to be. Yeah, we'll go for the lower level guy. Kind of risky as Norway. However, it will make it work. Trust me. Anyway, exercising. Five speed. Merge up the navies. And we're going to indefinitely exercise the navies as well and assign a admiral. And I realize this guy is a mine layer. That's actually really good. I think he's going to be our boy. Yep, he's going to be our boy. Also going to click auto split off as well. So just to recap, merge up the fleets, big fat death stack, exercise them, and also break them off and repair by hitting this button automatically. Otherwise, there's a chance they can actually sink. What it works is, is they only break off and repair if the majority of these guys are damaged. But this one will split them off if they sustain like maybe the 50% more damage and then they'll break off individually. Anyway. Then we're also going to assign a naval dot to the repair queue. And if they get damaged, they will automatically go to port, repair, PS appear in this queue, and subtract the naval dot yards from existing construction into the repair. So this dot yard gets used for this repair. And also, this destroyer, when it's done, will be added onto this fleet. Are you following along at home? There's a lot to take in here, isn't there? The strategy we're going to go for isn't going to be a multi purpose fleet. The strategy we're going to go for is a spam fleet, which basically means we're going to spam out loads of crappy rubbish destroyers in mass numbers to do as much damage as possible but here we go what are the benefits of norway is you get this guy to begin with now this guy is bad the history behind this guy is he held back the armed forces of norway and didn't really help out in the war effort in the long run however he has got some good benefits such as extra entrenchment entrenchment speed and army xp and plus you have to hire him at the start of the game so it saves you a bit of money you've also got this guy as well it means changing conscription laws is very very difficult but it's not really difficult because we can't even change conscription laws anyway. I guess this really only applies if you've got a different ideology. Regardless, you can't change this guy anyway, so don't worry about it. And five speed. Here we go. So right now, we're a little bit low on fuel. So we're going to have to get a bit of fuel. And we can get it from our neighbors, Romania. Yes, Romania. That's right. You can trade through land and you don't need to use convoys. You got a little dash there. That means you're trading through a land route and not a naval route. But however, that's still not enough fuel because it's still red and it's still ticking down. So what I can do is get some from France as well. Well, that's steel. I don't want steel. Yeah, from the Netherlands. Yes, seven. There we go. And that green number means it's ticking up and it's filling the stockpile. And the stockpile will be complete in 1.1 years. But if it was red, the number indicates until you are fully depleted. Okay, that part is done. We're going to go all the way to the right now and do this focus for the merchant fleets. The earlier we can get this, the quicker we can start converting our convoys into destroyers. And you start off with so many convoys. So just take advantage of it. Why not, right? One option is to buy convoys of other nations because you can convert them to destroyers. However, there is a limit of how quickly you can convert them over. So it's not really always worthwhile to get more convoys. But there is a limit of how many convoys you can get. So don't get too many. Don't get too greedy. So all we want to do is add on a torpedo and also try and go for the better gun overall as well. Yes. All right. Depth charges are done and the better gun. I'm going to research the battery ahead of time and I'm going to start working on construction. We've got a new mile that's unlocked. You can either go for this one or work towards the one that's 5% discount, well, 5% production for your convoys. This one's pretty good, but you need an advisor for that. We haven't got the political power for it yet. Merchant ships is unlocked and we can go into decisions now and hit this button. 
And for 40 convoys, it gets converted into... Is that 10 destroyers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... I think it's less than 10. Maybe it's 9. Boom. There you go. It takes 103 days, 105 days. And your convoys get turned into destroyers. They're not very good destroyers, but they're destroyers. Next thing we're going to do is going to do start the rearmament. Once again, once you've started the broken gun policies, this cannot be selected. So select it now and get those mills. You start producing the equipment now, then we can take advantage of it later on in the war. And trust me, we will. We're going to go for concentrated industry because we want building slots. And plus, we're not going to be changing our production lines that much. The big benefit for this is building slots, which we'll run out of and also dockyard output, which is going to affect our ability to build ships and refit them. Okay, let's upgrade the destroyer now. And we can press the up arrow and assign the Mayo, add the torpedo. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, save that. So this is shown as grayed out, meaning this is an old model, but I want to finish it because I don't want to waste the production. So then I'm going to make a new production line for the destroyer, this one. And then when this one's done and the one is completed, then it'll move these two naval dockyards onto this one and produce them indefinitely and then send them to the fleet when they're completed also we've got enough xp for our navy so we can go for naval reform which gives us more taking naval experience and we're going to take advantage of all the naval experience because we can get our doctrines nice and early which is going to be super helpful so we have 35 army xp go for proper heritage you've probably seen me do this a dozen times and then just fill out the doctrines or fill out the template for the horse how many horses let's find out i think it's about a 40 width horse i think 40 width horse it is 40 width horse and that's free because we've got proper heritage which is cost effective in the long run and this makes this division bigger meaning when we exercise we gain more xp right now we're only getting 0.028 but it's gone up to 0.08 and eventually it'll go up to about 1 0.1 something like that which is still a lot of xp per day the one division trait used to be a lot stronger but it got nerfed massively but it still kind of works it is kind of useful for minor powers you can get like 100 200 xp for free uh, as a minor power so it is totally worth next up before i forget i'm gonna get the officer course for the navy so instilled aggression no do i want to deal damage or do i want to defend let's have a look at the stats on the admiral attack does five percent navy does five percent so it kind of cancels each other out i think we're going to go for the defense because we want to make the screening ships as hard as possible and we're also going to go for efficient communications oh that's a difficult one so if a ship's fleet is too large, it has a positioning penalty. It means like they can't communicate effectively to get into position to do damage. And we are going to have a big fleet. So getting that positioning penalty fixed and in better order is going to be worthwhile for us. It doesn't really apply to me because I'm not going for the communist path. But I suppose if you want to go for this one and gain non-core manpower, I suppose you could. But we're not going to be grabbing any mom power. You must be kept away from trouble. I don't know what difference any of those ones make. That You can upset the Soviet Union if you're careful. Anyway, start rearmament. All right, let's fix the government. Continue the government. And this is a government that's all about being pacifist. We don't like war. Let's not be involved in wars around the world. Let's keep our neutrality. There's a lot of nations that won neutrality, didn't they? But they ended up didn't get in it. The Netherlands won neutrality, but that never happened. Worked out for them, did it? All right, we also want support equipment. We're going to make a little bit of that. And now we've got an extra military factories. We can assign those on and start producing them. Assign them on early because you're going to gain production efficiency. It means you'll produce a decent amount over time. We are lacking the resources, but we'll come back to that at some point. All right, the government is here. And now the focus tree is significantly smaller. Nice. All right, broken gun policies. Yes. This hurts our production efficiency cap, but it gives a big boost of construction bonus for our civilian factories. If you want to embargo Italy, why not? To stability. And we've got our new cabinet. All right, we're going to go for this guy. I'll be honest with you. Fixing the economy for Norway is a nightmare. It really is. And eventually your economy kind of fixes itself, even if you don't build enough civilian factories. My advice for you is just ignore the mobilization and stack as much political power as possible. And this does give us a big juicy injection of political power. But we will be going eventually for this one, social incrementism, which fixes our broken government. So eventually then at that point, we have a decent government. Boom. Can you see this? 10 destroyers. And just have a look at what these destroyers look like. Yeah, they're very naked. We will improve these. We will make them better. We will come back to that. Boom. Send you guys over. Send them to the main fleet. Hop them back into your decisions. Another 40 convoys. Yes, more destroyers. See how OP this is now? You get the idea, right? You can make a pretty big fleet out of just some old beaten up convoys. It's pretty insane. Right now, because our war support has just taken a dip, we need to fix it. And we fix it by a few reasons. There's one here, 5% war support. So we're going to go for this one. If you click on your focus here and click on the down arrow, you can find war support in your focus tree. And there's another five. Oh, there's a 10 one there. So we'll go for that one next. We're going to eventually have to go for these focuses anyway. But if you don't fix your conscription issues, you're going to run into problems with this fires. We're going to lose a big chunk of stability. 
Trotsky has arrived. In fact, Trotsky would enjoy Mexico. Go to Mexico. Off you go. Next up, we're going to go for this guy who gives stability and political power. Stability gives more political power. And it also gives more political power. The political power on top of the po political power. More political power. Trotsky's arrived in Mexico. Not our problem anymore. Concentrated is one. is done. Concentrated two is next. We can build more building slots. As you can see, the industry is just not fixing itself. It's just because our stability and our consumer goods are unbelievably high. And you can only fix it by doing the economic stuff on the left side here. Eventually, it will fix itself. But you've got to give it a little bit of a push. Just realize not fixing the conscription loses your stability. I do think you get the stability back. At the top it off, it also gives you communism as well. I guess this could be kind of a weird strategy to boost communism from Norway. Ooh, I feel like there's a video coming for that, boys. War support. All right, we go for this one. Gives plus 10 war support. Focus that we need to do anyway, so we're going to have to do it regardless. I'll admit, the primary currency of Norway, your bread and butter, is going to be political power. And be able to stack political power early like this, even having to deal with the painfulness of this, is going to pay off in the long run, trust me. More destroyers. What I'm also going to do is select this guy and click on auto upgrade as well. When we get some new improvements, we're going to add them on automatically. All right, war support has arrived. Next up, don't spend your political power yet. Don't mobilize, trust me. You want to go for this one, social incrementism and therefore... Change of mobilization laws isn't so unbelievably expensive. Fix that government. Yeah, you do. You gain the stability back. It bounces back. So you can see now this is fully trained. A 40 width horse. And now it gains you 0 0.18 army XP per day. Which is about half the value. Oh no, actually it's really close to the value of this existing guy. Oh wow. Okay. Field Marshal. This guy's going to be pretty good. Otto. He has the ability to become a logistics wizard, which is really strong. All right, we're going to work on electronic mechanical engineering because we need radio stuffs. And we also need uh, fire control, which will give some big boosts to our ships. Cut the military budget and then so-called incrementalism to fix the government. Loads of stability. Improved light battery is done. You also have the option to go for the multi-purpose ones, but they don't have as much piercing. And they also have less overall damage as well. Two attack versus 1.5, so... Yeah, I wouldn't advise going for the higher level ones. We're going to go for the soft attack for the artillery. We will focus on that later on, but for now, it is not our main priority. Okay, so this is an old model destroyer now. So we'll mark it as the last one, and at the same time, start producing the new destroyer, which is this one. Shift it to the top, have a little cheeky peek, and see if it's up to date. Yep, that's the best one we got. We can have anti-air on it as well. Yeah, do that as well. Try and use the latest model. Add the destroyers into the main fleet. Start making some more destroyers. Go, go, go. Okay, I'm really tempted to send an attache to China to boost my war support because then I can mobilize really quickly. It's going to be cheaper than hiring a advisor that increases war support. Remember, you gain plus 10 war support for going for a attache, so it's definitely worth it. As long as you've got the command power, it can be done. Unfortunately, the downside is these protest events, which are really bad. Okay, so social incrementism is done. Partial mobilization for the government. And now we can start bailing out the towns, which gives three civilian factories. Don't be deceived by this. It says plus one, but it's actually one state, one state, one state. It's basically saying one factory for each of these three states. For that for 35 day focus, three civilian factories. Wow, that's eye wateringly strong. Okay, and the economy has woken up and we've gained two civilian factories. I told you the economy for Norway is a nightmare because no matter what you do, it's still really tricky to catch up. And we've upgraded our destroyer again. This one has a Mayo bonus, I'm presuming. Regardless, we'll we'll just queue it up anyway. Yep, queue it up, finish this one, go on to the next one. So just to make sense, it works from top to bottom. And then when, when this one finishes, it will close this queue because there's only one left to produce. And then it'll start moving on to this one, which is unlimited. And then that'll be attached onto the main fleet as well. Bail out the towns and then print more money. Printing money. The oldest trick in the book to fixing the economy. Let's make a more ideal division. So we're going to replace this with artillery. Then we're going to add on... We're actually going to take off a bit of artillery and then add on the artillery here. I think it's something like this we're going to go with. It's kind of like a 7-2, but it's not 7. The reason we go for this kind of wonky template that's quite small is it has lots of soft attack, but it also has very low manpower. This will work really in handy to make a big army to cover the ports for our nation and we're behind on purely guns no way we could just need to catch up on weapons okay we're not going to produce these by the way i just wanted to do that to to see what equipment i needed the most of it's a nice little tricky way of just 
seeing and getting a glance at your logistics to know what you're behind on and what you need to catch up on. Machine tools is done. And then me mechanical computing is next. Remember, the right side is to get these ones, fire control, which gives extra anti-air damage as well as extra crit chance. And also, oh, it actually increases crit chance. Oh, that's interesting. My understanding is this was just pure hit chance. Okay. Oh, it's the same for the radar too. The increased hit chance. Oh, this doesn't work the way I thought it did. My understanding is this was like raw accuracy. Ooh, do I care about crit chance? Maybe I should be. Anyway, more destroyers have arrived. Add them on the army, get some more. As you can see, we've, our navy has got so much significantly bigger. We're now eating into fuel. We've got 104 days left. So we'll import a little bit more from Romania. And there we go. We're back in the green. We'll work on a little bit on passive for our soft attack and defense bonuses just for the infantry that's on the ground. Giving that little bit of extra defense is going to be really useful. We're going to improve the soft attack values. Defense is going to be useful in this scenario. Yes, 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 yes. I queue up the Myos with shift because that way I don't have to return to it. It just makes my life easier. Press one in the chat if you like making your life easier. So there's a weird bug that happens that when you upgrade something that isn't even related to this ship, it still shows that this is an old and a new model. And you put them side by side, look, this one, Hallmark 8 and Hallmark 7, they both have the production value of 931. So what's the point? In this case, just go into here and mark this as a recommission and just say and decommission the new one because at the end of the day, it's not even a new model. No, nothing's even different. Why are you doing this to me? Anyway, restart the public investment, which gets rid of the hard 30s. And finally, we can build stuff. Our economy finally wakes up. All right, we're going to go for this guy, which increases construction speed by 17%. And he also does a special extra thing too. Increases production of convoys if you go for the trait for the Mayo. The shipping capitalist. And if you go to the Mayo now, ships, this trait becomes available. And it allows you to build convoys a little bit faster. We won't be focused on convoys initially, but it's something we'll do later on. And the reason why I've queued this up. And I might as well queue these ones up as well. Yeah, queue them all up. Okay, we're behind on steel right now. And I care because it's affecting the production of this destroyer. So we're going to import one steel from France. There we go. And now we're pumping those ones out again. You know, in hindsight, I realize we actually do have the destroyer too. Do we? Hang on. We have the technology for it, but I can't see it. Am I going mad? Oh, it's this one. It's this one. But for some reason, it hasn't got the eye here. So that confused me, guys. So these ones have an I, which represents one, and it'd be two Roman numerals of I to represent two. But this one doesn't have it. Oh, that's really confused me. And that's actually kind of annoyed me a little bit as well, because that means we've been producing a model that has lower HP than the newer one. Oh, that's really annoying. That's wound me up a little bit. I'm a little bit annoyed now, just because the game's UI isn't showing it. Ah, yeah, yeah. You have frustrated me. Anyway, torpedoes and then depth charges. This is the, the new, new destroyer then we mark that one as auto upgrade oh hang on there's upgrades for this one too yeah better aa okay new one and then when that one's complete move on to the next one and then we can mark that one to be decommissioned no it's already been decommissioned when you upgrade the new to the latest model the previous one gets decommissioned the reason why you want to go for a better chassis is you can actually show it here in the ships if you hold ship you can hold up and open up more of these boxes to here you can see that the HP is 25, where this one is 40. Just just the amount of damage they can take before they die. That's all it is. Just take take more of a beating before they're dead. Three naval dockyards. Yeah, I'll take that. Finally expanding that naval production. Well, the, the third 30s are done now. But the economy is in a lot better shape. But the armed forces is still a mess. So how do we fix the armed forces? What you have to do is develop regions of Norway. Every time you click one of these, you gain the retrospective bonuses. Most of them are geared towards manpower and civilian production, but they do branch out when you go for each point into two points into three points. But also click on them and it gains you one development. You need 15 minimum development to start fixing your incompetent, obsolete armed forces. So we'll start doing that now. now. Be aware too, it will require a lot of convoys as well to fix it. When this one's done, this will be the last one we convert before we start making convoys. Actually, are we done making convoys now? Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, we are, because you need at least 200 convoys to fix your armed forces. Why? I don't know. For some reason, Norway is a weird nation where convoys are like your secondary currency. <laughs> it's, it's so weird, but hey, that's the way Norway works. Okay, we've just upgraded our radar. Can we add radar on? No. We just finished this, but it, it says that there's an upgrade opportunity. Oh, I wish it wouldn't do this. 
Yeah, look, you can see the production cost is 1150, 1150. Once again, this is an old bug, guys. Just ignore it. Yep, this is the last one we're going to do for now. We will make more convoys later on, but for now, these are the last 10. We now have a 62 convoys. So we need 200 convoys to be able to modernize our armed forces. That's the reason why we're focused on that. However, if you look really closely on your com on your convoy, I've got convoys on the brain. If you click on your focus tree and then search for convoys, you can actually see there are loads of focuses that give you free convoys. This one gives you 75. This one gives you 150. Okay, I changed my mind, actually. I'm going to make some more because I realize I'm going to have so many much extra. It feels kind of stupid not to uh, not to make them immediately, right? Right? All right, developing more of our regions. It's best to focus on developing the south before you develop the north. The reason why is all the manpower is in the south. Particularly Oslo is the best spot. You gain plus 10 uh, manpower for the first click. So be aware that gaining a little bit more manpower is going to go a long way. Oh, look at the production of this destroyer now. Ooh, just pumping them out. One of the downsides to this is these destroyers are eating into your manpower every time you produce one of them. So just be aware and keep an eye on it because it will be your manpower. You don't have a lot of manpower as normal. It's one of the resources you kind of need a lot of, but you don't have much of. I think I'm going to rush concentrate three. One, because it unlocks building slots and building slots is something we're going to run out of. I actually think right now, I don't think we need that. Once again, focus on what you want you need the most of. Is it going to be construction? Usually always really well. Is it production? Probably not so much. But concentrate is good because it gives you more dot yet output. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the concentrated for now. A Mayo has been unlocked. It is for infantry equipment. So we're going to focus on reliability and then overall production, then defense. Then soft attack, then breakthrough, then soft attack. Oops, selected the wrong one. Get rid of it and queue them up again. That way, if I queue them up, I don't have to keep going back to it and it doesn't waste my time with the pop ups at the top of the screen. Okay, okay, develop more of the south. You need 60 political power to do that. And remember, you need to do this 15 times. Expand the merchant fleet. Okay, we're done now. And I don't think we can progress down these focuses. But we do gain political power plus 10%. Ooh. So once you've fixed your economy, you can go all the way over to, to build an independent Norway, which gives some really juicy bonuses to your research and your production. I didn't realize it also gave political power. Once again, political power is one of your primary resources as Norway. So get on it. And plus, it also gives four civilian factories too. What a jump start to your economy. That's insane. We're going to queue up another destroyer as well, because I realize we're going to run out of uh, space for naval dockyards. So just assuming that when these ones can't be placed, we put them onto the new one. Okay, computer machine is next up. Okay. I'm going to explain myself now. This is stupid. It's done the same thing again. It's upgraded it, even though there is not an upgrade opportunity. So annoying. Decommission, recommission. Hang on. Did I do the right thing there? I don't think I did. This is the new destroyer. Where is it? New destroyer. Yep. Decommission, recommission. Yep. 10 more destroyers. Again, I think this might be the last time now. And also don't keep forget about developing your capital as well as all the south of Norway. You, want, you need 15 development before you can proceed. So spend that political power. Radar is done. Next radar. Next radar is the key one, I believe, because that's the one that gives you the module for the ships. So now we can get extra detection. Detection on ships is really OP. Build an independent Norway. Right. There's an option to reduce consumer goods. However, I don't think this is useful. If you look, your consumer goods are already getting reduced from broken gun policy and printing money and stability. So right now, out of all the civilian factories we've got, only two of them are being used by consumer goods. There is diminishing returns to stacking consumer goods lower and lower. So my advice to you in this circumstance, it's just not worth it. So there's no point going any lower. However, this gives 75 convoys. Yeah, I think I'll take that. All right, develop more of the south. Yes, eight of 30 we're not going to go away all the way to 30 we're just going to go to 15 and then we're done what i'm going to do is train a bunch of divisions as many as we can and then on a little cheeky stab to see what equipment we need so 404 544 days to catch up for guns and for artillery 252 days so that tells me one into there and then the rest go into regular guns just to balance things out i'm not going to train these now though because i'll do that in 1939 anyway also, I'm going to select Relief of Command. Most of the time gives us a significant amount of XP. Ooh, look at it going up. Ooh, and the attache to China was a really good idea. Look at all the XP I'm getting from that. Ooh, that was a really good decision, Dave. I'll pat myself on the back. Well done. That's right. We're going to develop Norway again. What we need to do now to progress down our military focuses, as you can see, they're all grayed out. We can't select any of the Air Force, Navy, or the Army ones. Is because we need to get rid of broken gun policies. And to get rid of it, we have to rearm our nation. To do that, we have to rearm for defense. Broken gun policies, by the way, is really good for the economy. But it's really hurtful 
to your military production. So I guess you want to stay on it as long as you can, but you need to eventually start building up your, uh, your armed forces. You can't stay on it forever, Dave. And I was I did the right decision. Concentrated 3 was the right one because we're running out of building slots in the south. And if you look in the north of Norway, the infrastructure is really dog. So I wouldn't recommend it. I realize we're a little bit behind on steel, so import a little bit more. So as you can see, as time goes on, we can't really focus on our economy because we're having to import more stuff. It's a never-ending cycle of importing stuff and building stuff. More development and also more radar tech. Now we can start adding on the more up-to-date radar tech. And then when these guys are done, we'll start to develop the new destroyers. Just to recap, assigned one. So when this one is complete, moves on to the next one. Starts from the top to the bottom. Then you work on the old one here and you work into the one that's got the radar on it. Does that make sense? Our queen has dead. F in the chat, boys. The neutrality guard. And then we have to rearm for defense and they go further down. There is also a really awesome buff here for dockyard output. And you can take advantage of that later on. We probably will, actually. How many destroyers? That's right. 92 more development 11 of 30 that's not going to do higher go by the way local manpower only applies of 10 percent for the very first click of the first development so what i might as well just do is get the five percent out of all the states right get the first tick for all of them and then the other ones don't give additional extra manpower i don't think so anyway so oslo is maxed out and if you click on this icon here and hover over it so plus local manpower plus 10 percent yeah and you don't gain anything else so there's no point. Don't bother. Yep, just put one in for all the states and then start developing the other ones up. Next. Yep. Concentrate three is done. So now we can start building dot yards in the areas that can bonus it the most. But these ones, finish that one off. So always finish the one up top that you've done and then work on all the others. And this gives a bonus to dot yard construction. You see that plus 15%? And these ones have got bonuses to too. So take advantage of all the bonuses. Why not, right? All right, passive bonuses. Do it. Neutrality Guard gives you a bunch of divisions for free. Delete them. And then, rearm for defense. Broken gun policy? No longer broken. Okay, what I do here is I do improve fire control. And then when I'm done, I do an improved machine and then go for the final advanced fire control. I don't understand why these ones aren't connected, why they're floating away, but they're not even affected by the year date as well. So if you get this one, it's affected by the 1940 ahead of time penalty, but this one isn't because it's just floating here. Why? I don't know. All right, it's 939 now. I think it's time to train better troops. Spam these boys out, put them low supply, change this guy over to the right division. We're going to go press V for area defense, pop them on the coastline all along here. Yep, 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 yep. And focus on putting them on the port. So we only need four divisions to do that. What I do here is I see how many divisions I need. And I know these ones have got a shortage. So I delete the three off the bottom and then another one. And that gives us a little trick of manpower. Might have to do another one. Yeah, because otherwise we need manpower for the destroyer production. Okay, I'm a bit of a crossroads now. I'm going to improve development. Two more ticks, then we're done. Then we need to fix our armed forces, which we'll also do very shortly. Then at this point, I'm tempted to convert some of these destroyers into mine layers. So what you do for this is go into your production, show outdated designs, summarized by your destroyers, find the one that's the model that's just been refitted for from the convoys. It's this one. Here you go. Refitted destroyer class. Find it. See, it's just a naked one. Add the Maya one. And then at the same time, add mine laying tubes. And then we can give it a mine icon, something like that, just to remember it. We can call this the miner. Oof. There you go. So we've got the miner now. What I could do then is select this fleet. Select those 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Can't count. 8. Click refit them and change them to this ship. It'll take five days per ship. It's practically free. Boom, off you go. And what we also do is change to the naval refit yards, the officer core, and that makes them upgrade 25% quicker. So let these guys finish. Let them get done. We've got a new radar upgrade as well. Start working on the new upgrade for radar. Boom, then we start refitting. And then straight away, we're fitting so many different uh, of our mine layers. Deploy you guys, put them on the ports. And immediately start exercising to level three. Okay, we need stuff now to fix our economy. We need to do the trains again. The magic train button that gives us 15 trains. More destroyers? Sure. And then the final development is this one. And then, then we should have the pop-up to fix our army. I think we have to do this maybe first. Yeah, I think we do. Yep. And then the decision. Modernize the armed forces. It will cost you 30 command power, which is practically three points. And also 100 convoys. The first one removed 10%. The second one will remove the further 20% from the rest of it. Super important that because this is so painful. 25% speed, 20% orc, 30% attack. It just makes your armed forces absolutely useless. 
You have to get rid of this. If you don't, you will get absolutely steamrolled by the Germans. All right, next up, we need to do this one. This unlocks a special support company called the Winter Logistics Company. I forgot this even existed, but it also gives pop manpower. So do it. And also this one gives attack and breakthrough for the entire army for free. Which is another win, so why not, right? All right, the destroyers are almost fitted. Yep. Then what I'm going to do now is grab another bunch of refitted destroyers. We're going to give them a custom icon, okay? That way they, they jump out. So go show outdated equipment. Find the ones, the refitted one, this one. And give it a goofy icon like the crab. And then when we click on here, we can see all the crabs and we know these are all the ones that need to be upgraded. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We need to upgrade them to the new model. All take five days each. We'll go on that immediately. What I want to basically do is lay loads of mines in this region, therefore to, to prevent them from doing naval invasions and then hinder their ability to actually manage their forces here. I realize going for this ahead of time is not really worth my time either. So I'm going to work on mine laying which increases mine laying damage by plus 20, which is huge. Also, we have the ability to upgrade our destroyer here by adding on the new fire control. And we've also upgraded the radar too. So this is a really advanced uh, ship now. I'm going to discontinue this ship. And this is the main mine lane one we're going to use to work on the more advanced artillery. So what do mines do? They reduce the movement speed of the enemy operate within a region and speed has an impact on spotting as an impact on combat engagement uh, also increases accident chance which goes up astronomically and increases attrition as well and also there is a chance that every now and then accidents will happen and ships could get damaged or sunk which will happen just based on being within a region for instance this one archipelagos can you see that the naval consumption goes up and i believe the attrition goes up as well but it doesn't actually show that you know, fords and archipelagos has uh, an attrition penalty as well but you can't see it all right improve the guns passive bonuses are worth it once again the mines are done the question i've got to ask myself now is do you want to improve more mines one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay these are the last ten i promise you the vinyl last ten so all we're doing here is adding on mine laying rails onto a standard basic destroyer and the impact of that is it has the ability to drop mines and we just have the ability to project well that's another benefit as well you also impact more of your naval suppression in a region if you are have mines in that region I changed my mind. Another 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. They're the final 15. Boom. So many mines. So many opportunities for mining everywhere. And I also have the option to go for this one and improve weapons as well. Do it. I want these guys to exercise to level 3 here. And then when they're there, we can start adding on more equipment to them. Yeah, we can do it now, though. Add on. Here we go. Winter Logistics Company. So what it basically does is adds more cold acclimatization, which reduces attrition and supply, but it also gives you extra attack and defense in snow conditions. Snow is really difficult to attack regardless. This is a massive buff to your troops. It's nothing like any of the support companies in the current game. It doesn't replace recon. It doesn't replace logistics. It is literally its own thing. It just requires a bit of support equipment. So go for it. If I were to train a bunch of these, what would I be bottlenecked on? Infantry equipment, 137 days. Or artillery, 295 days. They're about even. Yeah, they're about even. Okay, we're low on fuel again. So a little bit more fuel from Romania. Yeah, that'll keep us going. Okay, we're getting close to war now. So remember, late 1939, that's when they will start declare warring us. So be aware of that. And also we'll start producing our new destroyers here, here. And then automatically assign them on when they're done onto our existing fleet. Artillery is done. We're working more on passive soft attack bonuses. If you fix your armed forces as uh, Norway, you're going to be in a really good state and you'll do really well at defending against the Germans when they do land on you. You'll be totally fine. All right, we're going to go for fleet and being. And the reason we're doing that is it gives mine laying efficiency. Apart from that, there's no other really other big bonuses. And down the middle here, we'll give you a bunch of bonuses to our, de to our destroyers as well. So we're going to go for those. Um, the next up, would be trade interdiction it has like two focuses here that give extra org i think there might just be one no it's just one and then the best one is base strike for destroyers because it gives loads of org and sub detection however i want the mine lane efficiency because i don't know i like mine lane nice right mm -hmm. we seem to be focusing on mine lane so let's go we're through with that this is a very brute force strategy if you're not already aware i mean i mean to be fair this is kind of obvious this is a brute force strategy because in the, the day we're not really making a diversified fleet we're just making a fleet of all the same thing Okay, shift those boys to the top and we're low on steel. Yep, import steel. Now let's look at the fleet. So we click on Navy, which is P. And you can see that we have two, 116 destroyers, nine subs and four heavy cruisers. Doesn't give me a breakdown though. 
of the different ships. I thought here would give me a breakdown. Oh, it does here. You go into here. The miner, we have 46 miners and the rest are refitted. That's fine. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Yep. All right. Boys are ready. Put them back into port. Also, I've forgotten to do the modernize the armed forces. That's the final one. And you see that removes all the penalties from you. Does it remove it instantly? It does. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oof. Germany's at war now. And we need 58 days to plan for this. Ooh. Germany's declared war on Poland. It is better for Germany to declare war on you, by the way, because that way you get the defensive modifier of his stability. We'll work on that very shortly. Uh, we're going to do radio for the extra war support. We've run out of convoys now, so we're going to have to still produce a few convoys. So work on that straight away. Is there any convoys part of our focus tree? Convoys? No, we took all the convoys out of the focus tree. All of them. Okay, so we'll have to produce a few. So we'll make 100 and then assign three naval dot yards onto here. Yep. All right, there's a bunch of guys we can go for. We'll go for the screening expert, which is the high command. And also the chief of the navy, which is the naval reform. What? I thought there was an, another naval guy. I could have swore there was another chief of the navy for Norway. What? Okay, I guess we have to go for the naval reformer. That's not the one that I want. It's the only one I've got to have. This one's kind of useful. Mine laying efficiency plus 35%. That's a huge increase in mine laying. I think what I want to do is probably assign everything. Yeah, in fact, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to, I want to finish you guys off up there. So when this one finishes, all the devil dot yards go into here. And then any extra ones flood into the convoys. And I say that we'll make 100 of these until this ends. And then we can, I suppose, add a destroyer to the very bottom. And assign that on if we need to, let's say, if we forget about the convoys. Okay, I think it's time to do Professor Officer Corps. And then we can rush the doctrines and we're going to go for mass mobilization for Norway to take advantage of human wave because that just gives so much manpower. All right, someone is justifying us. I wonder who it could be. It is the Germans and we just need to wait for them to declare and then we can spend that political power. So political power is something we're going to need desperately. So once we've done with this focus, we're just going to bank political power because we're going to need it to mobilize and change our conscription laws. And we're going to probably have to jump for service by requirement as quickly as we can as well. All right, the ships are ready. And I am incredibly nervous here. Oof. Ooh. I am so nervous, guys. This is gonna this is gonna be something. This is gonna be something. My advice at this point is not to use any more convoys to refit to destroyers. Yeah, don't do that at the moment. We need 14, 12 days before the Germans invade, because otherwise we're gonna have to deal with this big penalty that we're experiencing. Yeah, you need to sit on political power because you're gonna need to mobilize really quickly when the Germans declare war on you. Also, it's usually a really good idea to have one division here. Because otherwise they get to encircle your city in the west here. And this is always one that gets encircled really easily too. I'm going to move you down here and control B and moving forward and just let him just dig in there. The public oppose rearmament. You you pick your moments, don't you, Norway, huh? When, when Germany is justifying on war on you, about to declare war on you and destroy your nation, all of a sudden you're against rearming. You, you do pick your moments, don't you? It's all kicking off, lads. Germany invading France. Soviets invading Finland. League of Nations has been disbanded. Luxembourg taking its final breath. And the Germans have declared war on us. Okay, here we go. We're going to join the Allies immediately. We have the option here to go for the fascist path and uh, try and create a civil war as a fascist nation. This is how you flip fascist as Norway. The option you select if you don't want to go fascist is this one. Delay him. It costs you political power. But don't worry about it. This will only fire for real if you lose your capital. So my advice is don't lose that capital, okay? All right, we've got some political power now. So I'm going to use that immediately on extensive. Then I'm going to select this one. And that way it will put us into the minus on political power. And then we're starting to mobilize now. And we're going to actually going to get manpower. We're going to get convoys sent to us from the allies. Wow, thank you. Convoys. Are you going to send me convoys, Britain? Ah, oh, thank you very much. And they're not even aware that we can convert our convoys into destroyers. It's also kind of nice of them, isn't it? Yeah. You're actually giving us armed forces. 25 from France. Thank you very much. Okay. Germany has not declared on me, but we are at war. So we have the ability to start dropping mines and I'm going to start dropping mines directly into the East and North Sea. Can you see this? We've got the mine layer admiral. So he's going to mine more efficiently. If you look really closely too, the amount of mines we're dropping. And so many mines! The speed we drop them. You can only drop a maximum of 1,000 per region. But if you look really closely, can you see that our mine coverage is increasing our ship impact by 14%. What we want to do is increase our naval supremacy over 50%. Because if we're able to maintain more than 50% naval supremacy, it means they can't naval invaders. You need over 50% naval supremacy to actually activate. All right, that focus is done. Now we get to do the mine laying effort which also increases mine laying technology by times three three 100 percenters man they're so kind aren't they getting steel we're gonna have to get that 
by land route. So make sure you select a trade partner that has the dash there, not the one that requires a certain amount of convoys. Oh, and our fleet has been engaged here. But we need to retreat really quickly. Oh, we're going to lose a few destroyers. Ooh, we might get out by losing just a few. Five. Yeah, that's ah, not good, but it is what it is. Okay, hold position. Everyone go back to port and then repair up. Once again, this is not in our favor. I'm okay with that. I want to drop my mines first, do my mining damage initially, and then start to actually counterattack into them. I want to do it specifically in that order. And now we're focusing super heavily on repairs here. And luckily, we've got the naval refit guy, which makes a massive impact. Okay, we definitely need divisions now. Uh, how many do we need? Six. We'll go with six for now. Here we go, repair queue. So what happens is if they go to a level 4, in this case it's this level 7-4, that means they can repair 7 ships simultaneously at the same time. When each ship gets repaired, it repairs the one beneath it over and over and over again. With the ones at the top are obviously taking quite a long time to finish. And if we assign more naval dot yards, we can hopefully do it a little bit quicker. But most of the time, it's only going to assign the ones that we've got free, in this case the 7. I would like to use our ports to resupply their ships. Why not? Repairs are almost done. Just fixing some of the heavier ships there. The bigger ships, the battleships, the heavy cruisers, for instance, take a lot longer to repair, but they can sustain a lot more damage. So it's they're bullet sponges, but they're also pretty decent at holding their own. But the downside is that they, when they die, outtake, outtake, outtake. HP is really good for absorbing damage. However, if they take lots of damage, they're knocked out of combat for a very long time. It's either you lose the ship or you repair it and it'll take a long time to repair. Pick your poison, I guess. All right, all the ships are repaired now, apart from this one. Trying to naval invade me. I'm going to counterattack and help out. And when they land, we can just push them back into the ocean. So we've got some sh some planes. I'm going to put them in interception to do a little bit of damage in the air. Do a naval invasion here. Denied. Also, our mining tech's completed, but then we can go for the f more advanced mining tech, I presume. No, we're still going to work on like bonuses for uh, torpedoes. Well, these are torpedoes. Okay, I'm getting mines and torpedoes mixed up. Hang on. Okay, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I, the, the torpedo upgrade has gone through. I'm waiting still for the mine one again. Okay, I'm getting confused. What's happening? What's going on? There, there is an option to deploy free divisions in these regions. I personally don't think it's really that worth it. It's a way of defending yourself when Germany attacks you. I suppose it's a cool feature and everything. However, I don't really want to take advantage of it because you lose convoys. I don't want to do that. So just get rid of that. I don't want to see that. I developed because I wanted to fix my uh, my arms. Apart from that, my arms are doing really great right now. So I don't care. How are the mines doing here? 134 mines. There is a way of, in the past you can go into lost ships and you can actually see how many ships were sunk by mines. But for some reason now, you can't. It tells you why the ship died, but it doesn't break down like what they were killed by. In the past, you could hover over it and it would like give you a breakdown of how these ships were destroyed. And you could see, I don't know, sunk by hitting mine, for instance. Just such a shame, really, because you can't actually see the impact of the mines they're actually having, which is just a bit rubbish. Okay, this is an issue you run into with Norway and a few other nations. You can see these red lines here. There's basically supply getting intercepted. You can fix this by building a railway from here to here and then another railway from here to here. That way it all connects up to the capital and that way you don't have to do naval routes with convoys. Everything can be kept in land, therefore you don't have to get intercepted by uh, submarines on convoy raiding. All right. The boys, are you going to go out and do some more mine laying? Off you go. Mine laying effort is just complete as well. I'm perfectly timed. All right. I think we're not going to select the focus for a little while. We need political power because we need to get the stability up. Otherwise, we're going to get uh, crises that are going to fire. And I don't want that to happen because that's going to cause problems. Also, I'm going to refit some of my convoys in because we've got loads of convoys. Improved mines is way ahead of time, though. Yeah, I'll save that for another day. Next up. Intel agency, a free agency for free, and it gives me two civilian factories off the map. I think you meant to only be able to go for that if you're in exile, but the option's there, so do it. Okay, we're going to stop our imports of oil and steel for a little while, because I want to fix these railways, and I didn't have any civilian factories free, so this is like a use of civilian factories that I really need for. I guess I could do this one dockyard as well, right? Yeah, that'll be done in no time. It'll be done in like five days, so I'll let that one finish first, and before I start importing stuff in again. Yep. All right. Now we start importing the oil. We'll go for four of those. And the steel. Oh, we need steel so bad. And that's our industry completely shut down. This is one of those instances that we need more civilian factories now. And we are mining once again. And look at the mines. Oh my god, we almost have a thousand mines. 900. And the naval invading. So once again, when they naval invade, all they need to do is grab a port. Okay, if they do grab a port, then you're going to be in a really bad way. However, in this circumstance, as you can see, I went perfectly fine. And I'm dropping mines now here because I maxed out the mines in this region. As you can see, the mine here keeps going from 999 to 1000. Can you see it glitching there? What's happening? Something's hitting the mine. 
and then you're having to put a new mine down because you have like a maximum supply of mine capacity. I want to actually see is there anywhere that we can actually see if something was sunk by a mine. I don't think you can. Four of these were lost and zero sunk. In the past, if you hover over that, it would give you a breakdown on how they were killed. And you can hover over these individually one by one, but that's not really a good use of your time, is it? So we go to Intel and Navy. Can't get really a breakdown of anything else. Okay, we've run out of fuel. One day left of fuel. So clearly fuel is more important than steel at the moment. So we're going to have to prioritize steel. Well, fuel. Fuel, steel, fuel, steel. We have got strikes. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Uh, we have to go to war economy. And then we try and fix the strikes with political power. War economy is important because we can get more civilian factories, but it's not giving us any more anyway. Man, we're cutting this so fine. We could also build a radar as well in this region. We don't have the civilian production for it, though. That's the problem. And then we're dropping mines in this region, too. We could basically drop mines all the way around Norway. Therefore, I could be feel super safe. Be aware, mines are more effective in different regions. Oceans, mines really suck. See that chance to hit mine drop by 75%. So mines are really useless in oceans. Also, they're not really that great in shallow seas, either. Chance to hit mine minus 50%. However, fords and archipelagos, look at that. No penalty to hit mine. So you're going to hit them all the time in archipelagos. We need to stop importing as much steel and then put it all on to fuel. We are really struggling with importing of materials at the moment. Yeah, look at that. So bad. Everything's red. Here we've got a spy agency. Once again, we want to focus on our economy. Is there anything that gives factories, industry? This one gives reduction of consumer goods. Yeah, these ones here. So we have to do the Norwegian School of Economics. You can see the amount of mines we're laying here is just insane. So many mines. And they're trying to naval invaders here. Once again, I can't really see with the numbers here how effective these mines even are. But regardless, I'm pushing you guys back into the ocean anyway. The amount of damage we can do is just insane. Oh no, you're gone. Be aware, if you didn't get rid of your army shoes, these battles would be next to impossible to fix. They'd be very, very difficult to win. So my advice is sort out your army problems immediately. Otherwise, you don't have to deal with problems later on, I guess. Artillery is a problem, so we'll fix that now. Work on the more advanced guns. Work on soft attack. Mine laying maxed out in all these regions. Now we're laying mines in the Barrett Sea, which have very little chance of getting hit by anyone. But we're still doing it anyway. And there's not even any enemy uh, ships in this region either. Friendly ships, 213. Enemy ships, zero. So the laying mines here is completely useless why are you doing this dave what a waste of time i feel like i want to lay mines in the north sea as english channel as well now you just keep spreading out the region where mines are getting laid once again this is a shallow sea so mines are rubbish here shallow sea rubbish mines are rop in archipelagos that's pretty much it there's not really that many of them in the world if you go into terrain map mode here you can actually see the archipelagos so there's one here uh, there's also is this is this the aegean you know it's adriatic this is the Aegean. So the Aegean and the Adriatic, the two A's. Uh, also the Norwegian coast. Also the Gulf of Bothwin. Bothwin? I feel like, I feel like I'm Welsh saying that. The Gulf of Finland is also an archipelago. I think there's also maybe... Yep, there's one in Labrador Sea too. Also the Caribbean Sea. Actually, you know what? There's actually more of them than I originally thought. There's also a few in the Java. You get the idea. I'm not going to make a list for you, okay? You get the idea. Ocean's not very good. Shallow Sea's pretty bad. Archipelago's perfect. Okay, Norwegian School of Economics. And then we can go for this one, which gives two civvies. Or this one that gives two civvies. Okay. I guess we'll go with two, I suppose. We have a spy. Pop you into Germany. Spies are good because they give you more intel on navies, which increase spotting chance. Naval invasion time. Okay, what you can do is while they're doing this naval invasion is take off all the sea zones. So you hold shift and click on them. Then we're going to convoy raid in this region. And we might be able to get them. I'm also going to put you guys on always engage now always engage is scary because you can lose your entire fleet but watch the battles because you can hit the button at the top of the screen and tell them to disengage the reason why engagement is important is the ai is really bad at knowing if they're going to win a battle so sometimes it's better to tell them to always engage do damage and potentially take losses other than just instantly retreating and then taking lots of damage as you run away and running away is really bad in this game because when you run away you can take lots of damage so sometimes you can actually win a battle if you just engage but the ai chooses to run away sometimes because all reasons i guess all right we're intercepting convoys here worth it and we're killing them so quick that the battleships can't even arrive and that's kind of the idea you want to flee this really quick it's kind of what trade interdiction is all about anyway you guys go here help him out with the support attack you guys go here too go 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 do large front offensive loads of org and encircled 
Easy. So this is the reason why you keep this one guy here. Without this one division here, this would have gotten encircled. And then you have the encirclement penalty here, which is like minus 30% attack and defense, which is really bad. Concentrated industry is worthwhile because once again, you want more building slots. And then to top that off as well, where do we even go from here at this point? You know what I mean? Like this flip at this point, you know, you're super confident that you're winning the naval battles. So what do you do at this point? Just realize too, that we might be able to assign a policy for our merchant fleet and escort fleet. No, it has to be six or higher for that. By the way, if you look really closely here, these ones with the cog are generic, meaning that every nation that has this style of merchant and escort fleet builder will have this exact same one. However, the ones with the little, I don't know, describe these as like fur or chevrons or medals. These are unique to only that specific country. In this case, plus 10 production for convoys. Amazing. I wanted to assign a policy, but I can't do that until it's leveled up again. We'll come back to that later. We're in convoy rating here, and it appears that we have 39% naval supremacy. I don't know how that's even possible. I guess they what they're doing here is they must have force, strike force in this region with big ships. That's the only thing I can think of. Anyway, continue laying mines. So be aware, the more you spread out your fleet to place mines, the slower they'll place mines in certain regions. As you can see right now, we've maxed out the mines here, maxing the mines out here. Mines, by the way, don't affect your ships. They only affect enemy ships. So it's almost like your ships just completely ignore them. It's like it's not a problem for the future, right? Something else to focus your production on too that I've forgotten about is trucks and also trains. It's one of those kind of things that just to think about in the future, but don't make a big deal about it. It's not that important. Pop, 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 pop. We're finally making mills, guys. We're actually making factories. What's going on there? You thought I'd forgotten, right? Empower the large industrial groups. Just give us some civilian factories, and this one gives a further three civilian factories and two. You can go for both of these, so do them. We need the industry right now, so get it done. I realize all these old ships. Ooh, naval invasion to Norway. Southern Norway. Stop exercising. Let them land. And once again, they're landing in a location here that's really painful. When they're on area defense, by the way, they will micro around the AI and try and defend the coastline and right now we pin them in so they've all just died instantly what i'm going to do is convert all my old refitted destroyers so if we double click on them it will select only that design it selects all of them and I select all of them we'll refit them all and then we'll finish all the old designs of these ones and then go from there so basically the entirety of my merchant fleet now is going to be mine layers why i think that's kind of funny as i said to you guys my enjoyment is the number one priority when it comes down to these videos. I know a lot of you guys kind of get a little bit mad that I don't do like full min-maxing esports, but my fun is always number one priority. So if someone asks me why are you min-maxing to the maximum, it's because I find this more fun. What can I say? Fun is fun. Hey, you've been encircled. Goodbye, Mussolini. This is kind of interesting. Destroyers have a depth charge number. So even if you don't put depth charges on submarines, they have actual depth charge damage. Do you know what? I never knew that. I'm learning new things, lads. Okay, something else to think about as well is continuous focus for naval, 20%. This also improves refitting speed, so that's something's really worth it. Something else to think about is our stability sucks. So how do we fix stability? I guess we can get rid of the dockyard guy and replace him with a stability guy. The Royal Chamberlain gave 15% stability, or this guy reduces war support. I'll go for the war support guy. Now we're over 50% stability, meaning we're not going to get a crisis for our industry or draft dodging and all that other bad stuff that might happen. Naval invasion, another one. For the most part, you can just let the AI take care of this. If you've reached this position right now and you've got a 7-2 division, you should be totally fine and not need to uh, give any support for the AI. Try another two more. Put you guys here. We maximum amount of mobilization. Yes, we need service by requirement now. And you did. Okay, I don't care about the additional army anymore. So we'll take care of that. And we'll now merge them all up in one. By the way, this has been recorded in the evening. If I'm mumbling a little bit, it's because it's been a long day. This is the fourth campaign of this. Because the first one I got completely demolished in Norway. I needed to learn the mechanics of the country more before I played it and showed you guys. I want to make sure I give you guys good videos. I just want to see videos where I don't really feel like I get the mechanics very well. I don't think it's a very good experience for you guys. So that's the reason why I've chose to record it again, because I love you guys so much. What's this? Mines maxed out all around here? Yeah, more mines. Yes, more. And how's the mine lane going with the upgrades? Yep, yeah, we're fitting and refitting, and each refit takes about three days. So good. Refitting, OP, service by requirement, also OP, also OP, naval, 
production bonus to 20%. And look how quickly we're refitting now. Refitting in two days. That's insane. In the olden days, laying mines used to slow down the game. And it's an old myth spread by the community that mine laying slows the game down it doesn't that got fixed a long time ago it was a problem in a really old version but it's never been a problem in a really really long time so the norway naval invasion do i even care enough about defending it no be aware of air support in this region if they put lots of cast up they can do a lot of damage for you but right now i them looking pretty good so i don't think it's going to be a problem and as you can see because they don't grab a port they never can get supply so eventually they run out of organization getting circumvent and die another naval invasion this time by the italians and then instantly get counterattacked and instantly die f and we can go for human wave offensive now again is that five percent recruitable population to be fair i should have waited i don't really need this but this gives five percent and then i get another five percent so my manpower goes up astronomically so it's definitely worth it i want to kind of upgrade my old destroyers as well can i find some of my destroyer twos and upgrade those as well select all the destroyer twos double clicking them all and double clicking Make sure we select all the destroyer twos. And then what I can do then is upgrade them all to the latest model. Yeah, this model. However, I don't want to do that unless I've got a research that's about to finish that might upgrade it further. No, we won't. No, that's fine. I can make the decision and do that. That was a lot of clicks. Felt like a big waste of time. Yeah. Oh, it kept the selection for me. I just forgot. The selection was there. Okay. Double click, double click, and select all the same type. When you double click, you're basically selecting the same model, by the way, the same variant version. It's not giving you the same chassis. It's upgrading the specific model of that certain kind. And if you're playing in the game for a while, you notice there's quite a lot of different variants if you keep upgrading them, particularly if you've got auto upgrade on. So what we're doing now is upgrading the ones that are the best models. I can make them stand out if you want by changing their icon, which I would recommend you do, by the way. Give it like a different icon, something that pops out. Oh, it's only four different choices. Oh, that was rubbish. I suppose what you could do is give it a different icon. A elite sub, not sub, destroyer. Oh, it did actually upgrade it then. No, it didn't upgrade it. No, it didn't. Why did it cost XP? I'm confused. Does it cost XP to rename something now? Am I going mad? No, it doesn't. Okay. So what I'm doing now is all the old models, the previous old, 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 old models. Ooh, that's actually really good for them. What they've done this surround this port. And now this is an encirclement penalty. But they're in a really good spot here to do a lot of damage with me. But I don't care. So I'll stop exercising as well. I'm so ballsy. I'm exercising my troops on the front line. Infantry specialist, super required. I sign that on immediately. I'm starting to do upgrades for the agency too, so I can become a spy master of the allies. Acoustic mine is done. Mines do more damage, which is good. But mine damage overall is useful. I suppose I could also go for the armor piercing shells for the destroyers too. I've just spotted that my Mayo now is level six for the ships, so I'll change that over. Select a Mayo. Policy funding is useless because that's XP. But less resources used. How much resources am I using for ships? One destroyer is two steel. I suppose that could add up, I guess. It's a cool end game strat that of reducing the amount of resources needed for production. Reliability plus 10% is kind of okay. I don't sure how reliability affects ships. Uh, Mile gains an extra research bonus. That could be quite good if you catch a golden research. The Norwegian engineering permanent industrial revolution production resource needs minus 10 percent compared to this one which is also 10 percent but it also gives a research bonus that's not very good being that it's unique for norway i thought this would be kind of cool but the bonus is kind of just meh because it's just like the other one this reduces the cost of production by five percent that's actually super strong increases max range of ships by 25 interesting battery of the hit chance plus 10 percent that feels op the great sea keeping weather penalty minus 50 percent interesting and the coastal battle fleet minus 10 percent production cost what a no-brainer of course i'm going to do that and that will make the cost of the ship go from 1454 1454 to 1328 do you know what that doesn't feel like much of a change <laughs> whatever there's no point refitting these by the way because all we're doing is reducing the cost but we'll just go from there and we'll also, we'll also mention that the other elite destroyer is a normal model but we can always just produce from this one in future in this situation just push into them you see eventually we win the battles anyway because as you can probably see here uh, they're running out of supply i feel super confident that's why i'm exercising on the front line so i do shift left click onto exercise to level three exercise them so they'll put them in a good spot to be more defensive and then i can think about maybe doing naval invasions or something i don't know all right so we've got max mines now for all of practically the north sea and along the coast of norway i guess what we do now is put mines into the entirety of the mediterranean i guess that's the natural place you would go from there unless the italian fleet is doing really well which i don't think it will be i'm gonna go here now and just drop mines everywhere 
Yep, here comes the mines. Oh, hang on. Our enemies have laid 25 mines and damaged zero ships. Oh, it says here zero damage and zero sunk. Okay, I'm blind as a bat. So we have damaged one ship and sunk two ships from the mines here. Zero, 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 zero. That's how you give a breakdown of how much damage your mines have actually made. I'm just going to basically lay them in the entirety of the Mediterranean, causing shipping problems for the next hundred years. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do something kind of wonky now. I'm going to make convoys. We're almost producing one convoy per day, just less than that, like 0 0.95, something like that. <laughs> That's pretty insane too. It's all insane. Oh, this is pretty insane too. It gives plus 10 aluminium and civilian factory construction. Yeah, why not? Just free resources on the map. Why not? How can I say no to that? Our ships are engaged. And I've got how many convoys here? How many destroyers here? 128. I guess like what I can do now is keep hitting this button to make uh, destroyers pin out of thin air. But we are producing like one destroyer every like 30 days now with a really advanced one. So I question how many convoys we even need. I guess we have one making convoys and one making the elite ships. So the no Southern Norway has been invaded. Oh no, it's the end of the world. No, no. What can we do? And they're dead. Rip. Even use the AI just to micro for me as well. Which is like the ultimate insult, isn't it? Oh, here we go. The mines we've laid in this sea has caused 24 mines to be hit. No, oh, hang on. No, I'm reading that wrong. One ship has been sunk though. I was reading the amount of ships that the enemy mines damaged. Okay, we can become the spy master now and get all the allied spies inside of Germany. And now we're over 500 mines now for each sea zone in the Mediterranean. And this completely blockades the entirety of Italy. There's also a really OP strat that I'm going to do after this as well. It allows you to lay mines against countries you're not even at war with. You'll see. Trust me, you'll see. They land. They get pushed. They run out of supply. And then eventually they die. Rip. I'm going to go for uh, encryption of ciphers and putting spies into Germany. You go X and just drop them in and getting lots of intel from them. And eventually we can learn about their navy. But what's to learn about? I don't know. For some reason, they're not pointing their ships up. Probably because of the amount of mines, probably. But you can see what they're doing is they're either sweeping for mines here or their mines are getting hit. I presume they're sweeping. That's why the mine count is going down very slowly. Usually, if you get intel on them, you can actually find out. That's what I've got. I have got a naval intel department. I think you need a max 80% naval intel to know where they're putting their ships up. It says, look, this area is gray, which tells me, and here and here, which tells me they've got ships operating, but I don't know what mission they're on. I need 80% to actually know what mission they're on. There we go. A thousand mines in each region of the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean is completely mined out. And I can also report all the mines back in to here as well. What? You, you, you sweep the mines here and they're back again. That was easy. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh man, I love the way mines work in Hoi 4. I love it. So I'm assigning spies that are German double agents. And that means I build a spy network significantly quicker inside of Germany. Worker conditions and also refit convoys into destroyers. I'm going to do something I don't usually do. We're going to do an operation, which is to steal their ciphers. It costs civilian factories and two spies, and it's risky. But with this, you can get 30% of decryption of their cipher by stealing one. So I'm going to do that just because I've never done it before. And I'm just kind of curious. I think there's an achievement from stealing ciphers. Or maybe it's one of the little metal things you get. I'm not sure. See, this is what the AI usually does. And this is actually a really effective strategy because they can try and encircle this port and do loads of damage. But by the looks of things, supply is looking still pretty good here. So it's not even an issue. And eventually they run out of supply. And then this happens. Rip. Carriers. We have a lot of those, right? Nope. But we do have this. Grand Battle Fleet increases naval AA attack. Okay, we're not going to take advantage of that much. Oh, mine laying efficiency plus 10%. What? More mine laying? See, it tends to be that mine laying does lay mines relatively slowly. They don't mine, mine them that heavily. Uh, however, if you stack all the modifiers, such as this, in mine laying, 25%. Then to top that off as well, we've also got this one, which is the Navy of Norway, which is another 35%. Plus, I think that's it, actually. Yeah, I think it's just those two modifiers. Okay, it doesn't even sound that much when I say it like that, does it? Damn, the push into Ukraine is massive. Even while the push in the north is going nowhere. And again, pop. So look at the mines in the med. So zero, 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 zero. What I'm looking for is my mines and what damage they've done. And not a lot. I think that might update once a year for the looks of things. No mines. But this is where I kind of what I was talking about goofy. If you're able to make it all the way over here... You start laying mines right next to Japan. <laughs> this is so stupid. And ask for docking rights from America. I already have docking rights because we're in a faction together. Okay. 
But here they come to lay mines into this ocean of fuel. So the more regions you spread them out, and the more regions you try and cover, the slower the mine lane would be. But be aware, I'm not actually at war with Japan right now. So this is the reason why this is super cheesy. I'm laying mines for the inevitable, inevitable war that I'll join, and then they'll get hit by my mines when they're at war with me. That's why it's kind of dumb. Hey, 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 look who's here. It's more German naval invading and getting absolutely obliterated. That's an F. And that's five tank divisions? Oh, I actually don't get to encircle these two because what's going to happen there is they're going to retreat into Sweden. Yep. Yep. Which is such a weird mechanic. And now they're attacking from Sweden into Norway. Just think about that for a second. Attacking from neutral territory, territory into hostile territory. It just doesn't even make sense if you think about it, does it? The final fire control. Let's do it. All right, how are the mines going? 100 mines in all locations. I'm not sure we've got access into this sea now, so we're dropping them around the entirety of Japan. <laughs> I love this mechanic because I think it's so wonky, but I just think it's funny that it exists. It's a thing. It's a feature, guys. Planned feature. All right, there we go. Now we're at war. Join all the call to arms. Apparently, the coup's happened to me. We'll delay the coup again. That doesn't make any sense. What? I guess it thinks I've just declared war in Germany again, I guess. Maybe I glitched it somehow. Anyway, then we're going to convoy raid entirety of Japan. So we right click on this to, to remove all regions and then convoy raid right into all these regions too. And I'm going to put everything on aggressive. Off you go. Also start going to produce more of my raw destroyers as well. I just automatically assign them onto the big fleet. Off you go, off you go. Yeah, assign them on and send them off and also import the steel needed to produce them. Right now, we've got way too many convoys. I don't need to produce any more convoys. To be honest, we just need these two zones here. These ones, I'm 100% for both. And we're going to engage them. And we're on, by the way, we've set them to always engage. And look, the AI is running away and we're fighting this. How insane is that? They've got carriers and capital ships, but we're scrapping against them. However, they, we did lose more ships than they lost of theirs, though. Most of them were old crap destroyers. Engaging again. Convoy raiding. And it is two freights encirclement of japan is happening i want to try and keep the fleet as big as possible that's why i'm only going into two regions because if i start to split them off to get more convoy efficiency which you can see it's 100 percent 100 percent we're going to be engaging with smaller fleets and then therefore we're more likely to lose battles because when we do get into battles i uh, will end up losing more ships because we'll obviously be out competed because their ships are better quality than ours and there's more of them significantly boom get rid I know what you guys are going to probably say. I'm, I like to like put on my magic hat sometimes and think like, what is the community going to say from this? They're not going to like this because this is not historical. You know what I mean? I'm not playing like an actual proper Navy. Honestly, guys, hand on heart. The only way you can play a proper Navy is if you start off as a major power and you've got significant like, civilian factories or naval dockyards to actually build a proper Navy. To be fair, it's even really difficult to make a proper Navy is Germany, never mind any other nation. I don't think I've ever made a Navy from nothing to something and actually made it meaningful and impact in the world. A lot of the time I've been springboarded by using the existing ships that I start the game with. And then we're intercepting convoys again and they're all freights again. We've reached a point that we completely mined them in. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We've not put mines all the way around here. Yeah, just spread those mines out. You know you want to. Mines everywhere. We've deciphered the cipher for, Germ for the Germans. The spies all around build a big network so when you decipher the cipher you hover over here you can actually see i know it's this one here the red the green dot here it tells you the bonuses you get so you get more air detection big boost to interception detection good for anti-bombers and plus you get a big bonus to all of the intel stuff now if you click on this one though you'll gain a massive boost to all the ciphers for intel but plus you will also gain an extra 15 percent defense on core territory and 15% breakthrough for that specific, only that specific country though. I personally don't like to hit this button because it only lasts 30 days and then you have to decipher their cipher again. My advice is just do that when you're about to win and it's GG or maybe you're trying to break an entrenched position and you've run out of options and this is the desperate defense moment or desperate attack in this case. Have a look at the intel now. So they are mine sweeping. Wow, I never knew the AI even did this. They are sweeping for mines in these specific regions. Once again, I never knew the AI even did this, but they're doing a decent job too. Sweeping away, but they've lost four ships, two ships here, zero ships here. Hey, mine sweeping, AI. It's a new thing, but hey, it's working. Also focus I don't usually do is these ones down here. These are all government in exile ones, but these on the left give you big bonuses. So I'm going to do these ones. In the olden days, you couldn't go down this focus until you went into exile. So now I can do them and hopefully take advantage of some big bonuses, hopefully. I've also forgotten about this as well. Radio intelligence plus 9% for all departments. This is like unique for Norway. And now that means I have a full network, almost a full network for the Navy for Germany. 
I can see their models. I can see their designs. I can see their stats, individual ship types. I can see where they're performing missions. I basically, I see how much manpower they've got in the Navy as a whole. The Philippines has capitulated and I am combo raiding once again and encircling Japan. And I always like to double check when I intercept what I'm intercepting and it's just freight. They just carry resources and supplies, but you want to hit the troop transports because those obviously will hurt divisions and hurt equipment to a more massive level. To be fair, both of them are pretty good. And you can see the Chinese are beating them back now because they're losing their convoys and they're losing supply. Because of course, how did they get supply out of their country at this point? They can't, they're stuck. So yeah, the only way they can get supply out, funnily enough, is going from Nagasaki. Can I take care of Nagasaki? And because you've got low uh, rating efficiency, you convoys can sneak by. So what you do is press D to split, put them on aggressive, always engage. And now we have full combo rating efficiency in this region too. And if we're going to intercept anyone here, yeah. No, yeah, here we go. Yep, five troop transports, eight freights. Just obliterate them. And we've engaged and lost some British convoys once again. They have engaged with their big fleet here and we're fighting it out. Oh, we're duking it out. Ooh, I'm not sure if this is going to be worth it in the long run, but whatever. We're here to fight wars and do battles and stuff. We're not going to just sit on our hands. And the, and the Japanese are running away, but they've just lost only a handful of ships. What happens is the screening ships, the first row here, get hit. They're like the soft sponge. Then... When they've been destroyed, the next row, this one here, gets hit for the battle line. Oh, they're called the battle, the screening group, the battle line, and the carrier group. So you basically go through waves. You can only get to the carrier if you go through the two first initial waves. That's why carriers are so much harder to hit in battles. And we did lose of our pride of the fleet there. F for the pride of the fleet in the chat, lads. Anyone else will give stability? Yeah, actually, this guy gives 15 stability, but you lose stability. So what, what would that be? A net gain of five. Oh. But that was a waste of time. Okay, I guess we go for this socialist guy. Gives plus 10 stability, which is the same anyway. All these three guys give stability. Stability is a problem for Norway, apparently. Oh, they wiped my fleet here. So this was the concern I run into earlier. I'm worried that when I split the fleet up, because it's just not as strong as it would normally, it wouldn't be, with, be able to withstand much damage. And that's exactly what is, has happened. By halving the size of the fleet, its ability to withstand uh, the Navy as a whole of Japan is significantly less, and it's gotten pretty badly beaten in a battle and once again it's happening on this side now as well so splitting them off has been the death of my fleet and i'm probably gonna wipe my entire fleet <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so he's funny when the whole fleet engages it's so menacing they don't want to engage but when i half them they're willing to pursue and do damage it's just the way the ai works that if it's confident it can win a battle it will engage if it's not confident it just doesn't engage all right well there it goes that's the wipe to my entirety of my fleet there that limits my combat potential significantly i guess what can i do at this point to detour and just change my production i suppose what i could do is go into submarines maybe ask for a license from britain maybe submarine two and i can go mass combo rating because that seems to be the theme of this strategy doesn't it so what you do is when you get a license it researches i think 10 percent quicker it might be 20 percent. i'm not sure all right we'll just relay all the mines in all the regions we left Whoa, many years later, AI's like, I'm going to pull my finger out and invade somewhere completely different. And I'm actually impressed. If I go strike force here, I'm curious to see how much naval projection I get because I get 100% boost due to mine coverage. It's like one of the easiest ways in the game to increase naval supremacy. 100% air superiority gives 100% boost and so does mine laying efficiency. So my naval suppression here would be 45% so they could still do a naval invasion. And because it's been so long and these divisions aren't optimal, I'm just able to right click and push into them. Wow, that's so easy. <laughs> I didn't think it would be that easy, but it is. They're going to retreat into Sweden again. Yep. Oh, no, 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 they didn't. No, they got encircled that time. Oh, and they coordinate a landing in the south. Wow. If the AI was doing this intentionally, that would be absolute genius. But it's all just a coincidence. Rip. Oh, dear. And oh dear. Mussolini deposed and British in Japan. And civil war kind of sad in a way because I, I don't really have the ability to actually project any more damage other than combo rating or potentially bombing from this point so it's kind of like i just sit on the sidelines and just cheer the allies on so once the another issue of being a minor power in hoi 4 it's like my ability to project power from this point is ad limited another day another naval invasion you know what i wish i'd done he's gone for maintenance companies to do the capture ratio i would have stolen so much equipment from just pushing them back into the sea it's weird that you don't capture any from an encirclement or pushing into the ocean but if you get maintenance companies you can recycle equipment back it's weird that isn't it naval invasion norway 
when you make a naval invasion, but you can't start any divisions because you don't have the technology for it. That's right. You're incapable of knowing how to move uh, your troops over an ocean. Wait a minute. I can move them by convoy, but not a naval invasion? Madness. Ten divisions. Go. Takes uh, 70 days to plan this. Could we research marines and get extra bonuses? It's too little too late, boys. I think it's already beginning at the end. Hey, guess who's back? It's Slovakia and Bulgaria. When you really want to plan a naval invasion, but it's taking too long. And I don't even have the naval supremacy to do this either. So I wouldn't even be able to go anyway. That's kind of disappointing. Maybe I can help out here. Hello. You do have a fleet, Germany. Decided just not to use it. And the Brits have arrived and they're running away. Oh, everyone's running away. Okay. Well, we need Germany anyway. Rip. Are the Soviets at war with the Allies? No, they're not. They're just, they're just squeezing Bulgaria from both sides. Come on, lads. Help out. Go, go, go. All the spies. It's kind of really funny that Bulgaria is just holding on here. And the axes have completely crashed. But Bulgaria is a major power. Bulgaria is always a major power. I don't know how that even happens. The Allied traffic jam. Denying them from capping Bulgaria. Oh, oh. Like they're about to get it. Is this it? And GG. And that. And the German fleet. on oh, the Bismarck. Yes. Norway. And we have ships now. After losing the entirety of our fleet. Decimated. We send it back into Japan for revenge. Revenge against the Japanese. Whoosh. I'm going to be real. If you want to make more of an impact as Norway, you're probably off making a big fighter fleet. Because you've got quite a lot of aluminium. Yeah, 112 aluminium. That's insane. So what you could do with that is make really powerful fighters. And if you do these ones, deploy the militias of Oslo. Takes seven days. You lose all these bonuses. But you gain a free division, I think. It's like a really desperate way of getting divisions. I don't think you'll ever take advantage of that. My advice is take advantage of all these bonuses. But some of them are negatives, aren't they? Adds planted, planted resistance. And we gain two divisions that are low strength. And you can't delete them. Yeah, I'm never going to do that ever. I guarantee you I'll never do that. Anyway, the boys have arrived. Whoosh! Oh, I'm going to take the navy. Yoink, yoink. I'm going to get two fleets and two capital ships. So disappointing. Anyway, we have peace. In our time, off our time. I forget what the quote even is. But Norway has expanded. Can I recommend this Norwegian strategy? Not really. It sucks. It's really cool that you could just turn convoys into destroyers. But this, they're really bad and they have to be refitted to actually use them. So they're not really worth your time. They're a good deterrent though. But they don't have enough naval supremacy. Because they're destroyers to actually make an impact in the East and North Sea. So you still get naval invaded anyway. In my previous game, I did make lots of destroyers and I engaged their fleets every time. And if I had them on always engage, I always ended up winning battles over and over again. Uh, my advice is make planes as a Norway, a Norwegian like air controller with maybe within this region and interceptors. And then eventually you can use that as do bombings on Germany. But overall, you just don't have a lot of manpower to actually do much. But your industry just get pretty good late game. So maybe work on that and that's where you want to go from there, I guess. Yeah. No? A Norwegian Navy? Oh, that's a big thumbs down from me. Guys, if you enjoyed this kind of videos and you want more of this kind of content, like and subscribe and YouTube will present you with more of this kind of stuff. Every single click. Do you like it? Let me know in the comments. If you want these kind of videos and you want more of these kind of videos, there's one on the screen right now that'll just be for you. Give it a click and this will be the content that will sort you out for today. You good? I'll see you soon.